In this video we're going to cover a skill called taking out the greatest common factor. And to a, give you a scenario where this is going to make sense, let's tie it to a skill you should already know. Let's say I ask you to distribute 3 uh, into the binomial three uh, x plus 3. We should all know how to do that, hopefully. We take 3 times x and 3 times 3. And what do we end up with? We end up with 3x plus 9. All right, so this is multiplying. When you distribute, you're multiplying. Taking out the greatest common factor is basically reversing this process. So for example, I would give you something like 3x plus 9. All right, I'd give you the answer, 3x plus 9, and ask you to rewrite it as I'll use the term undistributed. All right, that's not an official math term, but you're basically undistributing. You're taking something out, okay? So we look and we say, well, how many terms do we have here? We've got two terms. We've got 3x and we've got 9. And what factors do those two terms have in common? What's a number or variable that will go into both of those? And in this case, it's 3. So once you figure out what that is, you write it outside the parentheses. You're basically setting up your reverse distrib uh, distribution problem. And then you got to think to yourself, all right, what do I have to put in these blanks so that 3 times something is 3x? That would be x. And 3 times what is 9? That would be 3. And you can always check your answer by distributing. So you could take 3 times x plus 3 and distribute it. And you should end up with what you started with. And in this case, we do. So we know that we have taken out the greatest common factor. Now, actually, something we really want to be careful about is taking out the greatest common factor, OK? Let me give you another example of one where you might take out a common factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. And I'm sure most of your work is going to say to take out the greatest common factor or factor completely. And that means to take out the greatest common factor. So let's say you have something like uh, 10x plus, oh, how about um, 20, let's just go 20y. OK, so we still have two terms. We have a 10x and a 20y. And say, well, 2 goes into both of those. 2 goes into 10 and 2 goes into 20. So I'll take a 2 out. And what times 2 is 10? You know, remember when you're distributing, you're multiplying? Well, when you're factoring this out, you're dividing. 2 divided by 10 is 5. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And you end up with that. So you did take out a common factor of a 2. But we didn't take out the greatest common factor, because there's a number bigger than 2 that goes into both 10 and 20. And that is 10, right? So you always want to make sure to take out the greatest common factor. If we look at what we did over here, we could say, well, I still have two terms left in the parentheses, and, and they have a common factor of a 5. So technically, I could bring that 5 out, and that would leave me with x plus 2y. And you'd end up with 10 times x plus 2y, which is the same thing you get if you just take out the 10 at the beginning. Okay? So you're looking for the greatest common factor. All right, let's try some that have some variables in them. We get a little more difficult here. Let's try something like uh, 7. I'll choose my pencil. 7x squared y plus 21xy squared. All right, that's getting a little fancy. So we still have two terms. We have 7x squared y and 21xy squared. So remember, x squared means x times x. So basically, 7x squared y means this. And you don't have to write this all out once you get used to it, but I kind of want to show you um, how we're going to get our answer. And we say, OK, so here we have these two terms. Actually, I could write 21 as 3 times 7. Let's do that. Really break it down. You, you have that in your head, but just for the sake of how I'm going to show this, let's write it like 3 times 7. OK, so these are all the factors, right? These are all the factors of the first term, and these are all the factors of the second term. Well, what factors do they have in common? They have a 7 in common. They have an x in common. 
Now that guy's that first term's got another factor of x, but the second term doesn't, so it's not in common. Okay. Um, and then actually, I could do this in a different color. Let's do this blue. And then they also have a y in common. So these are the factors they have in common, a 7, an x, and a y. So the greatest common factor is 7xy. So we pull that out front. And then we have to figure out what's going to go here and what's going to go here so that 7xy times what is 7xy squared. Well, it's basically whatever we did in circle, right? Whatever's left. So what's left here? is the x because we took out 7xy so we're left with x and here we took out the 7xy so we're left with the 3 and the y 3y and that's the answer so let's check it let's just double check we've got 7xy times x plus 3y so to check that we're going to distribute so 7xy times x is 7x squared y and 7xy times 3y would be 21x, and then y times y is y squared, which is the problem we started with. So we know we have it right, taking out the greatest common factor. All right, let's try a couple more. Maybe you can uh, try this one and pause the video and give it a try and see if you can get it and then start the video again. Okay, let's see. How about... Let's try, this one's going to be, oopsie, a little more complicated. Um, let's do 125 x to the third y to the fifth plus 60 x to the fourth z to the, or excuse me, x to the fourth y to the fourth and 85 x to the fifth, y to the second. Okay, so this one has three terms. We haven't done one with three terms yet, but so the common factor you find has to be a common factor of all three terms. So if you want to give it a try, pause the video. All right, so you're basically looking the, at this in little pieces, okay? The numbers we have to look at are 125, the coefficients, 125, 60 and 85. So we need to figure out the greatest common factor between these three numbers and that can be a whole process in and of itself but certainly I can see 5 goes into these, right? So that's 5 times 25 that's 5 times what? 12? And that's 5 times uh, 17. Okay, so they all share a common factor of 5 25, 12, and 17 don't share any common factors. As a matter of fact, 17 is prime. So 5 is going to be the biggest number that goes into all of these numbers. So I'll put my 5 out there. That's good. Now I need to look at my x's in each term. Okay, so here we have an x cubed, and we have an x to the 4th, and an x to the 5th. All right, so what do they have in common? What do all of these have? What factors do, that, do all of these terms possess? Well, you could write it all out, but what you're going to see is it's going to be the smallest exponent. Okay, so here are the factors that each term possesses, right? Well, what do they all have? They all have an x times an x times an x. That's got an x times an x times an x. And that's got an x times an x times an x, right? So it's always going to be the smallest exponent. If they all have an x as a factor in the term, the greatest common factor is going to be x to the smallest exponent, okay? So let's look at the y's. We have y to the fifth, y to the fourth, y to the second. So each term contains a y to the second or a y times a y. All right, so now we have to write what we have left. All right, so 5 times what is 125? We have that written down here, 5 times 25. Now, I have an x to the third pulled out and an x to the third in my uh, term, so it's gone. I don't have any more x's left here. And I had a y to the fifth, and I pulled out a y squared, so I'm left with y to the third. Now, if you're not really sure why it's y to the third, remember y to the fifth means all this multiplied together. 
and I took out a y squared. So this is a y squared. I took that out. What am I left with? y times y times y, or y to the third. Another way to remember it is when you take out this factor, you're dividing. So what you're really doing is you're doing y to the fifth divided by y to the second. And in that scenario, you subtract the exponents. So you end up with y to the third. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents. And when you divide, you subtract the exponents. So there's multiple ways to think about this and uh, come up with the answer. All right, let's go to the next one. So 60 divided by 5 is 12. I had an x to the fourth, and I took out an x to the third, so I'm left with x to the first. I had a y to the fourth, and I took out a y squared, so I'm left with y squared. 85 divided by 5 is 17. I had x to the fifth. I took out x to the third, so I'm left with x squared, which are these two guys right here. And I had a y squared, and I took out a y squared, so I don't have any more y's left in this term. And this, my friends, is our final answer. As incomplete as that may seem, that is taking out the greatest common factor. And again, we could check it by multiplying 5x to the third y into all of these three terms. All right, so that's basically, you know, as tough as those get. Let me show you one sort of um, oddball type thing that can happen just in case you run into it. A little um, different kind of problem. I won't do this, make this too hard. Let's say we had something like, uh, 5x, no, let's do 15x plus 5. Okay, that's easy. So what's the greatest common factor? There's two terms. This second term doesn't even have any variables, so I don't have to worry about variables. I'm just thinking what's the biggest number that goes into 5 and 15. That's 5. All right, so that's going to leave me with 3x, and this is the part I wanted to make sure that you um, understand. When you take out a 5, Remember, you're dividing, so you have to put a 1 here. Some students will just leave that blank. You know, they oh, I took the 5 out. It's here, so I don't have to write anything. You're dividing, and you have to be able to check it by redistributing. So you have to put a 1 there so that if you redistribute this, you end up with the term you're looking for. Anytime you're, what you're taking out is exactly the same as the term, you have to write 1. So if I had, um, let's do one that's a little more complicated, 6x squared y minus uh, 2xy. All right, what do those two terms have in common? Well, what number goes into both 6 and 2? That would be 2. First term has an x squared, second term has an x, so the smallest exponent there is x to the first. First term has a y, second term has a y, so they have a y in common. So if I take that out of the first term, 6 divided by 2 is 3 x squared divided by x just leaves x because x times x is x squared and the y came out so I don't have y's anymore now what do I put here I had a 2xy and I took out a 2xy well basically you're doing 2xy divided by 2xy so it's 1 anytime what you take out if you take out a greatest common factor and that greatest common factor is the same as a term you're gonna put a 1 there because you're dividing something by itself all right, so hopefully that helps with taking out the greatest common factor.